morning guys today I will make these six blocks for my six fold notebook that can look like this like that like this it can actually look like anything you want you can use any sort of cover fabric paper leather it's all up to you my main aim is to show you the structure of this notebook and in the next video you will see cover and closures this is the first time I will be using my new cutting and measuring mat I really like it I'm really happy with it and I highly recommend everyone to have it in your workshop for this project I will use 80 sheets of tea stained paper but you can use any paper you like actually I want uh, my notebook to have a vintage look, so I will be using this material. I will divide it into four piles, 20 each. As you can see, some pages are damaged and I really don't mind that. I find it even charming. These will be two A5 blocks. And these will be four A6 blocks. And now I will fold all of them. I want to be quite precise now because every page is sort of different because it was wet and it dried. So the more accurate I am, the better it will look at the end. I really love these stains. My mom used different techniques, as you can see. These two piles will remain. And these two. These pages will be cut in half. You can cut them any way you like. I'm showing what I'm doing and I'm using this knife and if you also do it this way I highly recommend you to use the new blade otherwise you will get these uneven edges these are fine at this point I will fold them again And arrange this mini signature I will turn it like this so that the edges will be different I don't want too straight and too wavy uh, edges to be in one side just like that again I just cut it of course you can fold both of them I prefer doing this one by one, just as I said, I want to make them as even as possible, especially the mini blocks. And again, just like that. This is what I meant, you don't want to have this. Here I have four mini blocks and I will make signatures with these pages. I don't recommend you to make uh, bigger signatures to take more than two pieces of paper because you don't want to see these edges, you don't want to cut them well, or, or I don't want to cut them. I don't like useless work to do. So I prefer to use just two pages. That's enough. Also, 
you might think that you can make this uh, bigger but indeed when you use this notebook and when you open it and of course you want to be able to open all the pages it will be not impossible but really difficult to write on these pages the cover will stuck somewhere here this is not what you want and just believe me that it's enough or it's up to you you can make it more thick and you can try and maybe you like the result and well then enjoy it <laughs> this is my experience he's talking here so i'm telling you what what i do we have two a5 blocks that go like this and we have four a6 blocks and they will go like this and now you can already see that we have this basic structure of our notebook and this is the time for binding you you can find many many videos with people using thick threads poking holes and showing you everything step by step this video is not about uh, the actual binding it's about it's about the construction of the whole book so if you don't like the way i show it please feel free to make your blocks with some other crafter and then you get back to assemble them i recommend you to do this before you start again so that you will have these sharp lines it will be easier like this make sure that the edges are more or less even well actually you want to make sure they're as even as possible i never like making any knots so you can see that here i have a loop and i will be using just a quite thin thread I use this uh, I don't know the English word for this anyway and the thread will be double for this block I will make one two three four five holes if you're not good at eye measuring you can you can actually measure let's say two centimeters it will be almost two centimeters as you can see and one in the middle and in the middle again but this is just for the first one i wouldn't do even this just to show you approximate sizes of of these gaps the beginning is very simple just make a hole find the loop and that's it just like that now you just follow these holes you can make one in advance because you will be coming from underneath And continue make these big stitches and you go the other way around so the first one as you can see is quite simple just two-sided stitching 
Now it's getting more interesting. I'm adding another signature and here I want to explain you why I'm not precise with poking holes and everything that is happening here because uh, these areas they won't be visible so I don't really care how how pretty the lines will be and it doesn't affect the quality of my binding of my blocks because well the threads they're moving you will see what I mean when I finish one block just next to this hole I'm making another one and since I will be coming from underneath I will make another one here and that's it I dive here and here I already have this hole I come out now I will make a loop like this I hope you understand at least something. So I used these two threads to make a loop and then I'm coming back to this hole. But before I do that again, I will poke one here. And again, if you're good at eye measuring, you don't have to do even this. You can just guess. And again, and back. Now I will just guess which I did. Guess again. Well, the second one also went not that difficult, I hope. The third one will be more challenging i think it will be more comfortable if you turn it like this so always you go left to the right unless you're left-handed again you just make this stitch from the inside i will be guessing and you can poke the hole in advance and here since we don't have these long stitches anymore to use we'll be using this area to make a loop and again inside again you go between the signatures, you find this thread and you go out and you go in again and again you go between two signatures you find the stitch, the thread Here I need to add some more thread. You have to do this as close to the paper as possible. Because we don't want to have this these threads inside of our block. We don't want them visible. 
as you can see this line is getting not too straight this one is quite straight this one also but I don't care about it as I said it won't be visible and it's the blocks the signatures are moving and you can straighten it when you're done with stitching and this way I will continue <laughs> until I'm done this is when I put some nice old movie on and and we'll enjoy the process which is quite meditative I want to add something uh, the more signatures you add the more difficult it gets to to go underneath of this this thread so what you can do is you can use this uh, needle that looks like like a hook like this I don't use them I don't even have one at home so I don't know I just remember I saw it somewhere on the YouTube that some girl was using it and I thought it's not a bad idea as for me <laughs> I don't really care about too much of some comfort I like challenges and also you you want to make sure that you're trying to make it tight when we're done we will make this binding stronger with glue with fabrics but generally you want it to be like really thin and really tight this is what we get and you can end it just any way you like something like this and that's it Enough. and when we make these blocks there is something different about them because the spine is visible there, there there won't be any cover I mean there will be some fabric piece of fabric but this area has to be really neat so I will not be making any preparations just as I did with the smaller blocks I just want to let you know that if you don't feel like confident enough not to make any holes in advance you just probably make these lines so you align with measuring that two two mm, middle 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 and then can do it just like this and even if you want you can do this If you feel more confident uh, with all these preparations please feel free to make these blocks a bit differently and I will just make them the way I am used to making them without any measuring without anything I will just try to be as neat as I can here is what I have Now I will add some glue to the spines so that they will be nice and strong and yet flexible.
I recommend you to use rather thick glue so that it won't leak between the pages. Here I prepared four pieces, uh, four smaller blocks, and again we don't care what they look like. These are leftovers from a big piece of fabric that I bought. And for these areas, well actually we will uh, paint it. And yet I want it to be like really nice because this is the visible part and this is actually the, the last layer that we will see. When we cover large blocks with fabrics we want to make sure that we have enough glue because if, if it's not enough you might get these air bubbles and we don't want that because when you open it uh, these bubbles they are visible and they become bigger and bigger now I cut it like this attach it to the page. There is a special glue for book binding but I'm pretty much sure that it's just the white glue that has another name. Maybe I'm wrong, maybe it's more flexible or more I don't know what. I just have this feeling that the regular white glue, tacky glue is enough. More glue here in these areas. Oh, and by the way, you want to use cotton fabric. You don't really want synthetic. Maybe you do. I don't. I find it that it's easier to work with cotton. Now I will play with this area. You see this bubble? I really don't want it here. It's not actually a bubble, it's a piece of glue. some more glue. This time it will be more thin. I want it to go through the fabric. This is what I made and I will let them dry properly and in the next video you will see how I assemble them 
and how I make a cover for this notebook. And you please stay safe, healthy and creative.